Hello and welcome back to Pre-Algebra with Miss Betsy. I'm glad you're here with me today and our topic for discussion in this video is what do we do if we want to divide powers that have like bases? If you're using the same text that I am, I'm in section 7.6 on page 233 of our text, which is Pre-Algebra for Christian Schools, using the first edition, and it is published by Bob Jones University Press. You don't need to use the same text, that just happens to be what I'm using. Now, before we get started, I've got two lame jokes for you. Matter of fact, I've got a pretty good new book that I got from my local library, Backyard Beasties, Jokes to Snake You Smile. So, hang on to your seat. The next few videos, I'm sure, will be filled with ultra-lame jokes. First, why are rabbits always smiling? Well, because they're hoppy, of course. And then, what goes hop, 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 tumble, tumble, tumble? And that one is a clumsy frog trying to hop downstairs. So, and finally, what do young insects ride in? Well, they ride in baby buggies. And there's a picture of the baby bugs in their baby buggies. So let's go ahead and dive right into section 7.6, where we are dividing powers with like bases. And you've learned earlier in this class that if you have powers that you want to multiply, x cubed times x to the fourth. We learned earlier that what a power is it's an expression where we use an exponent to indicate that the base is being used as a factor a certain number of times. So this x cubed says, let's use x as a factor three times. x to the fourth power says, let's use x as a factor four times. And we learned that when you are multiplying powers, what you do is you subtract. I'm sorry. When you're multiplying powers, you add exponents. x to the 3 plus 4, x to the 7. And that made a lot of sense to us when we saw what the actual definition of this power meant, because it says use x as a factor three times, multiply that by x used as a factor four times, gives us x being used as a factor seven times. So even though at first thought we might think, well, x cubed times x to the fourth is equal to x to the twelfth because we're multiplying, it doesn't because you have to go back and consider what exactly is, is this expression mean. It means x is used as a factor three times, x is used as a factor four times. For a total of seven times, three plus four is seven, a total of seven times that x is being used as a factor. And we're going to use, you know, some sort of, you know, it's going to make a lot of sense to you if you consider that multiplication, we are going to add the exponents. What do you think we might do with division? You know, just guess off the top of your head as I write this. Let's consider, how are we going to solve this expression 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared. Or in other words, this is 2 to the 5th power divided by 2 to the 2nd power. What does 2 to the 5th power mean? Well, that means use 2 as a factor 5 times in the numerator and use 2 as a factor twice in the denominator. Now we've known for a while, or maybe you've even just learned recently, that when you have the same factor in the numerator as you do in the denominator, you can cancel those common factors. So we now have 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 1, which is 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, I was glancing at my book here because I would come up with my problem. I thought I'd use the same problem they did. doesn't matter what I have is correct. Here, 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared. We have two pairs 
of factors of 2 that cancel. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 divided by 1. That is simply 2 used as a factor 3 times. Now what is that maybe going to suggest? 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared is 2 cubed. What's 5 minus 2? Yeah, exactly. 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared is the same as 2 to the 5 minus 2, which is 2 cubed. So what we have going on here, similarly to our multiplication, if we multiply powers with the same base, we added the exponents. If we divide powers that have the same base, we're going to subtract the exponents. And that's how you deal with dividing numbers that have the same bases, and dividing exponents that have the same bases. So if you went ahead and looked at a couple of examples that are in your text, on page 234, becomes very, very easy for you to do this. It says simplify 3 to the 5th divided by 3 squared. I just did that same problem except I used 2 to the 5th divided by 2 squared. So that becomes you keep the base and you subtract exponents. 3 cubed becomes your answer. Now, you may have later on, write ex each expression without an exponents, simplify if possible. When they tell you to simplify, they want you to go ahead and not leave this here as 3 to the 3 cubed. Just actually give me a real number for that. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So whenever you are doing problems, that include just a number raised to a power, typically they want you to multiply that out. When you have variables raised to a power, obviously you have nothing that you can multiply out. So if you had x to the seventh divided by x squared, you have powers that have like bases. You keep the base, you subtract the exponent, and you see that x to the 7th divided by x squared is equal to x to the 5th. And we're going to go ahead and actually take this and multiply it out, expand it out, so that you can just be convinced. x to the 7th means x is going to be used as a factor seven times, and I think I have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divided by x used as a factor twice. You have common factors here of x that cancel, and you have one, two, three, four, five factors of x divided by one. How many factors of x? We use our shorthand form of exponential notation to indicate that we have x being used as a factor five times. And even something simple as a factor being used seven times, I, as I was writing them out for you, counting them in my head, I still had to go back and say, okay, one, two, three, four. Yes, I do have seven there. I do have two here, and then you have to count. You see why the rules for dividing exponents and also the rules for multiplying exponents are so nice because you simply have to subtract numbers. You don't have to worry about making sure that you're canceling 93 common factors. Okay? Let's go ahead and do another one. It's going to look a little bit different this time.
I'm going to do this two ways. What happens if I have 4 squared minus, I'm sorry, 4 squared divided by 4 to the fifth? What, is, what have we just seen is the way that you divide powers with like bases. You keep the base and you subtract the exponents. You subtract the exponent that's in the denominator from the exponent that's in the numerator. Well, what's 2 is equal to minus 3. I mean, 2 minus 5 is equal to minus 3. So we now have x to the minus 3. And you think, that just looks really weird. Miss Betsy, I thought you said that when we had that exponent, that it meant this is how many times x is being used as a factor. Yes, it does. Okay, well, how do you use x as a factor? Negative three times, it doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, it doesn't make any sense to you. So let's see if there's another way that we can represent this. And I will tell you that x to the minus 3 is completely true, legitimate, acceptable. You're going to use negative exponents all the time. So instead of using our exponent rule for division that says when you're dividing exponential, when you're dividing exponents, or when you're dividing powers, simply keep the base and subtract the exponents. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. 4 squared go back here to x squared, sorry. x squared divided by x to the fifth. That says x times x divided by x times x times x times x times x. Everybody agree with that? Yeah, x squared says use x as a factor twice x to the fifth says use x as a factor five times. We're going to cancel common factors of x. And what do we now have? We have a 1 in the denominator and we have x times x times x. We have 1 in the numerator. x times x times x can be written as 1 over x cubed. And this makes sense to you because right here you see where we have x used as a factor three times. So what should this suggest to you? What it should suggest to you is exactly what is true. That x to the negative 3 is another way of writing 1 over x to the positive 3. Okay? So let's look at what we have here. I'm going to go back to my use a 4 here. 4 squared divided by 4 to the fifth was 4 times 4, 4 times 4 times 4. We cancel common factors. And we have 1 over 4 cubed. We also have 4 squared divided by 4 to the fifth using our idea that says subtract the exponents when you are dividing. And what I showed you, 1 over 4 cubed is the same as 4 to the minus 3. 1 over x cubed is the same as x to the minus 3. So, what, so it's showing us that these two expressions are the same. Remember I said that it indicates that these two things mean exactly the same thing. So how about if I do this and say these 
are the same. They are equivalent. Okay, they have the same value, they mean exactly the same thing. So this is suggesting to us something that is very, very true. And we're going to put this into an algebraic form. x to the minus a is equal to 1 over x to the a. And you also have to say that x is not equal to 0. Why can't x be equal to 0? You can't have zero division in the denominator, okay? But x to the minus a is equal to 1 over x to the a. This is where we, we're still learning to deal with using variables instead of actual numbers here. But what we have here, this is our pattern, our formula, if you will, that lets us know that if we have a negative exponent in the numerator, we can move that to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. It's actually the same thing. If we have a negative exponent in the denominator, we can move that to the numerator and the exponent becomes positive. Okay? Just try this a little bit. You'll begin to have it make sense to you. It might take you a little while to get comfortable with that, but it won't be very long at all. So you have an example here, and it's saying write 2 to the negative 3, write the expression 2 to the negative 3 without exponents. There's several steps to this problem. None of them are hard. The expression 2 to the minus 3 without exponents. This is the key that you're looking for right here, the fact that you have to be able to write this expression without exponents. Okay, the very first thing that you want to be able to do is say, oh, I realize that 2 to the minus 3 is the same as 1 over 2 cubed. How do you know that? You know that because you have learned, by the time that you get to where you're doing your, your homework, is that if you have any base with a negative power, you can write that with that same base in the denominator and a positive power. Now I want you to hear again how I explain this. If you have a power Remember, all a power is, it has a base and an exponent. If you have a power with a negative exponent, you can rewrite that expression, this here is in the numerator, with that same power in the denominator in a positive exponent. So you move the exponential expression to the other side of the fraction bar, change it from negative to positive. Okay, now we're getting closer. Write the expression 2 to the minus 3 without exponents. Well, there, we don't know anything we can do here. But we do know that if we move the exponential expression 2 to the minus 3 to the denominator, that becomes 2 to the positive 3. And then this makes sense to us because this tells us that 2 cubed, we are using 2 as a factor three times. So now we were able to complete our assignment which said I want you to rewrite 2 to the negative 3 without using exponents at all, negative or positive. So in order to be able to eliminate your exponents you have to have a positive exponent so that you can multiply these factors and end up with 1 eighth. How do you get from a negative exponent to a positive exponent, you do that by moving your exponential expression to the other side of the fraction bar. Okay? Let me pick one more example.
Let me pick one at random from your homework, and I want to look at write each expression here without exponents. Let me do two of these. 3 to the minus 2 and negative 2 to the minus 4. And then I guess if I want to do that, I should probably go ahead and erase the board so that I can go ahead and have a clean space to write on. I have 3 to the minus 2, and I have negative 2 to the minus 4. We want to write each expression without exponents. Write without exponents. So problem number one, three to the minus two, that's the same as one over three squared. Just practice this, burn it into your brain, into your mind. 3 to the minus 2 over 1, you can think of the negative exponent here, is in the numerator. Move the expression to the denominator, and the exponent becomes positive. 1 over 3 squared is 1 over 3 times 3, is 1 over 9. So, 3 to the minus 2 is equal to 1 9. Let's do our next example here, which was problem number two, and we're going to take this expression, negative two to the minus four. Make sure that you keep your parentheses, because it indicates that what we're using as a factor is not two, but it's the entire negative two as the factor. This is in the numerator with a negative exponent. We're going to move that entire exponential expression to the denominator, and the exponent becomes positive. That's 1 over negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. Negative 2 in parentheses to the negative 4 is the same as 1 16. Now look at that, consider that, see that it makes sense to you. Okay? Even negatives, negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive. Okay, however, what would have happened if this problem had been a little bit different? If instead of being negative 4, we had quantity negative 2 raised to the minus 3. A factor is a negative 2. We are going to use that in the denominator three times. Negative two times negative two times negative two. Negative two to the negative three in the numerator. We move that power to the denominator. The exponent becomes positive. This says use negative two as a factor three times. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, times a negative 2 is a negative 8, which is a negative 1 8. 1 over negative 8 is the same as negative 1 8, is also the same as a negative 1 over 8. Now we're typically going to go ahead and indicate that 1 divided by a negative 8 is a negative 1 8. Okay, go ahead and work on those, see what you can do. Uh, shoot me a text if you have difficulty, and I will see you next time.